he did uh, two uh, uh, excellent things. One was to win the Cold War on our terms, a remarkable achievement. Right. The second was, for at least many years, to make us both entrepreneurial and conservative, remembering what our basic liberties and responsibilities are, but opening that up to entrepreneurial and therefore economic success. <laughs> If your, uh, your project, if I may call it that, for reviving conservatism were to succeed, what would happen to modern liberalism as we know it? I mean, the movement, the, the political uh, class of liberalism. It would recover its roots in the, in the proper understanding of uh, our way of life and its ground. And in political terms, you would have perhaps two parties, mm -hmm. <laughs> both relatively sensible. You need always more than one because any party, even if its principles are, sep are sensible, often begins to do peculiar or ineffective things. That's what would happen, I think, to modern liberalism uh, politically. What would happen to modern liberalism in terms of its professors and attorneys and bureaucrats is that they would understand better what it is that they're attempting to teach and to serve. What, would it, what will it take to consummate this project among conservatives? I mean, does it take a certain kind of um, you know, political character? Does it take a Reagan? Does it take a, um, a personality, as it were? Uh, or is it enough to influence the idea you know, the competition of ideas and the discussion from gradually and from the bottom up. It needs both. Much of what I'm discussing I think of as very much connected to Reagan conservatism. And the success of Reagan conservatism needed Reagan, but it also needed uh, uh, several decades of mm -hmm. argument and development of conservative ideas, both in principle and as related to public policy in particular, so it needs both. It's also the case that one could argue now, um, and perhaps even then, that Reaganism is a, a slowing of the decline, but nonetheless, that's the direction. And for that direction to be more fundamentally slowed, or even turned in another direction, uh, <clears throat> the intellectual life, education, uh, that is, I think, fundamental. So the war of ideas uh, is ultimately more vital in the long term, but the political world is not equivalent to the war of ideas, mm -hmm. and therefore one needs political excellence, and presumably of Reagan's sort, if not necessarily quite of his merit. Mm. Where, do you, where do you put Reagan among the U.S. presidents? Uh, I put Reagan high because he, he did uh, two uh, uh, excellent things. One was to win the Cold War on our terms, mm -hmm. a remarkable achievement. Right. The second was uh, for at least many years to make us both entrepreneurial and conservative, remembering what our basic liberties and responsibilities are, but opening that up to entrepreneurial and therefore economic success. Those are two extremely significant achievements. So I put Reagan uh, up there. We're not talking Lincoln, we're not talking <laughs> Washington, uh -huh. but an extremely significant set of achievements uh, on Reagan's behalf. Ahead of, uh, ahead of the Roosevelt's? <laughs> yes, ahead of the Roosevelt's. I mean, Franklin Roosevelt did, did um, uh, many useful things, chief among them being his activity in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. so, and that's an extremely considerable activity. And the, the question of uh, what Roosevelt did uh, uh, to preserve uh, liberal capitalism or democratic capitalism is a vexed question, but one needs to look at it mm -hmm. seriously, not just from the standpoint of anti-Roosevelt. I don't put 
So, but I, I think Reagan is more significant, but I, certainly, I don't put Teddy Roosevelt in that category. What were his yeah. achievements at the end of the day? Right, right. Yeah. To wish he had remained, <laughs> to wish he'd been had a third term. That was a, yeah, and that's, and that's, <laughs> try to get one. and that's yeah. a bad thing, right? right. That shows right. A, a, a characteristic uh, lack of understanding of the importance of uh, the stability mm -hmm. of our political institutions as somehow more significant than any particular character. Now, and, and yet for all of his excellence, and I think you're right about his excellence, Reagan in a sense failed. As you say, he, in your terms, he, he, he slowed the decline, but he didn't reverse it. Uh, what, what lesson then does he leave with us? Well, part of it is the lesson of moderation. One has to be moderate in one's <clears throat> understanding of what actually can be achieved. Could Reagan have achieved more than he did? I think that's a, a question that's a better answered no than yes, at least on these broad matters. Ultimately, <clears throat> the intellectual uh, and spiritual and uh, life of people, their character, uh, is influenced by what happens politically, but isn't dominated by what happens politically. Uh, ultimately, one can't expect a particular figure running the government uh, to take the place of all that we need to do ourselves individually and in our institutions. After all, it's that kind of responsible self-government and activity that we are attempting to protect. And therefore, one can't expect too much from particular political changes. Thank you, Mark Blitz. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Charles.